Good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. Uh, sir, I have been listening to your lectures on uh, religion, on uh, embodied religion, on a lot of other things. And I have, I'm a very big fan of yours. And it's very my privilege to speak to you today. Sir, uh, I am not a very good uh, scholar. I'm not very well versed with all Vedic literature and all that. But uh, today, off late in India, we heard, uh, we hear a lot of things on intolerance, these, that, and all that things. A lot of big, big things which 99% of the people hardly have any knowledge, but still they uh, comment on that. So my basic uh, question is, there are simple two questions. Uh, in our Vedic literature, is there anything, uh, any word like secularism? Is there anything, any word like secularism in our Vedic literature? Very good, I will answer And that. if there is any word like secularism in our Vedic literature, then there has to be a certain meaning to it, which is embodied in our Hinduism uh, religion as such. And if there is a secularism word, how is it different from today's secularism, today's secular people? This is the most brilliant question. I, uh, in fact, uh, good, I will answer this. Okay. One of the things I discovered when I'm, when I'm analyzing atheists, today's Western Indologists were atheists, who are therefore removing the sacred part of the Vedic stuff. No, it's no, they no longer think of it as Shruti Praman. So when they are doing that, they're atheists. It suddenly occurred to me one morning that we had people called Charvaks in the ancient times. You know, they were Charvaks, one school of thought. Yeah, yeah, I know that. And these Charvaks were atheists. They were atheists who made fun of the Vedas. They did not agree with anything spiritual. They, they said it is all primitive, backward, it's all mumbo jumbo. They made fun of it. They were very serious scholars. They were good Sanskrit scholars, some of them. Uh, but ideologically, metaphysically, they dismissed anything to do with the transcendental realm, anything to do with Paramarthika. So as I was studying the Western Indologists' views on Paramarthika, it suddenly occurred to me that this is what the Charvaks used to do. So today's Marxists and atheists could be considered the return of the Charvaks. Okay. okay. I have a section in this book called Return of the Charvaks. I have a section in this book. So the Indologists today are a new kind of Charvak. The difference, the similarities I already told you, that they reject the Vedas, they reject any transcendental realm, you know, they, they think it's all uh, uh, kind of fooling the people, mumbo jumbo, it's buffoonery, like that. Uh, what is different is also very important. Today's Charvaks, so think of them as Charvak 2.0, these guys, are more dangerous because they have more power, they have material wealth. They are coming from very rich places. They have more money than our poor Brahmins today here. They control the discourse in terms of the, uh, the journals, the conferences, the, you know, the dissertations. So, whereas in the past, the Charvaks did not have power. They had intellectual freedom because we never denied people intellectual freedom. They had intellectual freedom, but they did not have this material power. and They were not the ones who were willing to buy us off with grants and money like today's Charvaks can. Today's Charvak comes. I'm told that some of the most important and brilliant Sanskrit scholars are on their payroll. I'm told this, but I'm given names of people. Some though I know. But I was meeting some guy here, he gave me names of a few others. He said, these are such good scholars, but they've been sold out. Because they come and buy the best. They have money, they'll buy the best. So, the Charvak 2.0 is better funded than the Charvak 1.0. The Charvak 2.0 is aligned with global powers. The Charvak 1.0 was just a regular Indian. He was not aligned with some foreign country. There was no age of globalization. He was not speaking for some guy sitting in Harvard, Columbia, you know, uh, Oxford and all that. He was just local guy. So the Charvak 2.0 is more dangerous for that reason. Also, ideologically, the Charvak 2.0 can say that the entire rise of science and technology in the last 500 years is because of we, the Charvaks, we, the secularists, we, the atheists. When you make cars, 
There's nothing to do with transcendental realm and Paramarthika. When you make a telephone, when you make an airplane, all these are very atheistic. They have no place for any spirituality. You don't need spirituality to learn physics, mathematics and all that. So they can give you a very solid argument that the material development, advancement of medicine and all kind of economic stuff is thanks to uh, religion being taken to the side and this new science and technology being developed. That will be their argument. Now, we may say that there was science in ancient India and all that, but they'll say, yes, for the last 500 years, we, the Westerners, have dominated. Maybe you had it earlier. And our domination is because of the atheism we brought into science. So, this Charvak 2.0 has an argument which the previous Charvak didn't have. Previous Charvak didn't have. Yes. Okay. Also, the new Charvak has the benefit of Marxism to come up with very sophisticated analysis about class exploitation how these, elite, these Brahmanical elites are exploiting the others. This kind of Marxist exploitation, class struggle was not the vocabulary of the earlier Charvaks. They were doing their argument based on philosophy and, and logic and so on. They were very logical people. But they were not making social, they were not making human rights oppression as their argument. Today's Charvak weapon is human rights. He yes. says you are violating human rights. The Charvak of the past has other arguments, but this one this is a new argument they've got. Yes. So today's Charvak also is armed with feminism. You know, he said, okay, now half the population is feminist, they're being exploited, I'm going to get them on my side, I'm going to get them all excited and upset. So he can bring that weapon. Yeah. And the Charvaks of the past didn't have this kind of sophisticated, developed feminist argument. Postmodernism. Postmodernism is a very dangerous thing for our tradition because it's disguised as something that is against colonialism and against the Western domination, it is, but it replaces the old domination with a new kind of domination. So people are, people don't understand. Postmodernism is a very deceptive thing because it fights colonialism, it fights materialism, it fights all these kind of things that you and I would fight, but it replaces with some new kind of uh, kind of privilege that they enjoy, which is very subtle to understand. So the charvak of today is if is a highly evolved Charvak. So Charvaks have evolved over the last 500 years into very sophisticated, smart, you know, well-organized machinery. They have well-organized machinery, these leftist people. So I like the term Charvak 2.0. I'm popularizing that now in this book, introducing it. Because it gives our scholars a map in which to locate them. Because in old times, we debated the Charvaks very successfully. We, de we did Purv Paksha of the Charvaks and responded to them very successfully. So we need to now tell our uh, traditional scholars that the Charvaks have come back. That is the return of the Charvaks. Okay. And now they have come back and they are eating your lunch. They are bossing you. So why are you not able to respond? Previously we did, so we have to respond again. So this is my way of locating this whole left-wing Marxist atheist group of ideological things that are out there as Charvaks. This, by using this vocabulary, we put them in our frame of thinking. Our frame of thinking. You see, because as long as we call them atheists, secularists, and all that, the discourse, the literature is so sophisticated and controlled by the West. Our per person is scared to even take them on. Our traditionalists don't know how to take them on. We are scared. Our people are scared. But when you say he's a charvak, then the guy says, okay, I understand. You see? Yes. So this is my answer to your question. Thank you. Thank you, sir.